Hi, Art Seekers. We're here with Robert Vargas, the master. I'm so excited to get to talk to you and hear a little bit more about your process and your work. Thank you for having me. So how did you come to work in this outdoor format? I've been painting outdoors uh, since I was a kid, really. Um, I think just as a means to to just have more room. I grew up in a, in a pretty... Uh, in a pretty condensed uh, old Victorian home in Boyle Heights, and um, I just needed the the floor space. So I would, uh, I mean, I, there's pictures of me at like nine years old outside in the front yard, just kind of sprawled out across the yard with all my uh, all my work. So what about the human face is intriguing to you? Why work with portraits? Well, my first love is painting uh, figurative work. So I've always been a figurative painter. Um, portraits just as a focus. Um, I think really started when I moved to uh, when I moved to downtown LA a little over a decade ago and um, and I was really interested and excited about how the city uh, the city's faces there would kind of find their way onto my onto my surfaces and um, that's that's kind of how that started as, as a way to kind of have this conversation with with the community and also give them a certain sense of identity, you know. Um, there's a lot of people, I draw a lot of homeless people there, and um, just last week I was, uh, I was down in Skid Row um, drawing portraits as a means to just have these conversations, hear their stories, share their stories through the work. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a really powerful exchange, whether it's, it's done in Skid Row or it's done, you know, on a, on a on a much larger platform, I think uh, I think that's what that's why people maybe resonate with it. It's because it's it's honest. The portraits of LA has been kind of a, a point of focus for the past like decade actually, the almost a thousand a year, and um, and it's just been something that I've been uh, looking to do as a way to engage with the community, engage with my with my city, and. Um, you know, these portraits aren't necessarily for sale uh, when I'm painting them. They're all kind of part of this, this larger catalog of work called Portraits of the World since I've been uh, doing a lot of traveling. It's part of a, uh, a concerted effort to make art accessible, make the creative process accessible, and which is super important to me. And also, just by pulling the random person from, from a crowd that's watching and incorporating them into my creative process, unbeknownst to them that they were going to be drawn that day, I think is a great way of turning the everyday person into this kind of hero. And um, I like to celebrate that. I mean, LA is so diverse, has so many um, interesting faces, and each one of those faces has a different story to tell. And it's just, uh, it's just great to be able to tell that story through my work and kind of together become part of this conversation. You know, there's someone's like energy, and there's of course composition and perspective and, um, you know, obviously a person's likeness, but it's more than that. It's really about, you know, kind of extracting uh, their soul to the surface. And there's kind of a dialogue of the souls because there's as much of me in the process or in the drawing as there is the person that I'm drawing. Can you explain your technique of how you work when you're attacking, approaching a wall? Um, well, you've been up there with me, so you know how, uh, you know the, the kind of depth that I'm working with. And um, I don't use projectors, I don't use uh, grids, and um, I love painting from life. I mean, I think that's really where the magic for me is. So um, the way I do the producer charcoal portraits, I use the same kind of approach when I'm working on a, on a very large wall. And um, I have the person usually up there with me on the lift and from sight painting them, you know, the width of this wall. Um, for me, it's, uh, that's, that's where I excel. And I, uh, and I just love that kind of uh, connection. Did you do that with the Our Lady of Downtown? I did, Our Lady of DTLA. That was a girl that I uh, selected that day um, about you know, an hour or so before I painted the mural. I already had a narrative and I knew exactly what I was going to do. There'd be a woman, you know, her face would come up and she'd be rising from the ground line in one hand, kind of 
pointing to herself as if to say, this is my downtown LA, and the other hand kind of wrapping around the building, welcoming people into the neighborhood. There's this whole narrative, but who that person is to be the vehicle to tell the story, I usually wait until the day of the mural. And, um, and because I work quickly, I select someone to take part in that. And um, again, turning the everyday person into this monumental hero, someone from the community. Do you have an overall takeaway message that you hope people will have when they see your body of work? I want to empower people and I want people to know that they are seen and it's important to me that uh, that the arts are accessible and through my work I really feel like um, you know it's it's a way to kind of catalog the the faces of downtown LA or of, of Los Angeles I mean, I'm literally trying to paint the city of Los Angeles and um, yeah, I think we're living in a really special time where we're kind of undergoing this kind of creative, entering this creative golden age. And I'm just pleased that my work is, is kind of contributing to that canon of, of where we are at this moment.